number 25 in attempting to solve the equation. Uh, John graphed the two and saw only one line. He wrote the answer as the empty set. Is he correct? Well, if you take this one and you solve for y, uh, I'm going to add 2y. You should have 6x equals 4 plus 2y. Subtract 4. You get 6x minus 4 equals 2y. Divide everything by 2. You get 3x minus 2. If you notice, this is the exact same line as this. So, of course, when you graph two separate lines, you know, you're going to have the same line. So the answer to the system, um, he's saying, is the empty set. Is he correct? Um, well, what's happening here is that the, the, the solution is an infinite amount of solutions. A typical mar marathon is 26.2 miles. Uh, using your reference tables, I believe that there are 1.6 kilometers or 1.6 miles in a kilometer, whatever the... Um, one mile is 1.6 kilometers, so what I'm going to do is multiply uh, 26.2 times 1.6. I get about 41.92. So now if we're running 12 kilometers per hour, well, how many hours is that? Okay, I get about, uh, about 3.5 hours. Um, I rounded to a... The nearest tenth, I believe, in the book on the reference sheet, it's maybe thousandths place. Uh, use the more accurate decimal. Uh, don't use 1.6. Number 27, I'm going to solve by adding 0.4y. Uh, I should have moved the other one, but that's okay. Uh, 1.8 is greater than or equal to 2.2. And then what I hear of here is minus 1.6y. If I subtract 2.2, subtract 2.2, I get negative 0.4 is greater than or equal to negative 1.6y. Divide both 6 by negative 1.6. Now keep in mind, when you're dividing by a negative, you have to flip this around. I get a positive 0.25. Jacob is working on his math homework. He decides the sum of the expressions 1 third plus 6 squared of 5 over 7 must be rational because it's a fraction. This is what us teachers tell you. Hey, if it's a fraction, it's rational. Unless the numerator, unless the numerator has a non-perfect square as the radicand. The square root of 5 is an irrational number. So is Jacob correct? Answer the question. No. And you could say because um, square root of 5 is irrational and the sum of a rational number which is one-third and an irrational number is irrational. Graph the inequality, y is greater than 2x minus 5 on the set of axes below. My y-intercept is negative 5. My slope is 2, so I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Because of this symbol, I'm going to use a dashed line. So just kind of sketching part of me for not having a ruler. This is my inequality boundary line. Um, it's saying greater than, so I'm going to shade above this. And what that means is every point... Every point on this side of the boundary line is a solution to that inequality. They want you to state the coordinates of a point in its solution. A very easy one, 0, 0. Sandy program at website checkout process with an equation. Uh, they're telling you to state an equation that represents the cost when S songs are downloaded. The cost is $1.29 for the flat rate and then $0.99 cents per song. This is your answer. All they want you to do is just state an equation. The next part says, Sandy figured she would be charged $52.77 for 52 songs. Is this correct amount? So what I'm going to do is plug in 52 for S and simplify this and see what my cost is. Using my calculator, I get 52.77. Now, answer the question, is, the correct, is this correct amount? Yes. Justify means you can show work. There's my work. My work is done.
Number 31 is asking for you to find the, the average rate of change between hour two and hour seven. Um, you could pretend that this is your X and this is your Y for your distance. Um, I'm just going to pair these two. I'm going to say 2, 140 and 7, 480. Remember the slope formula. I'm doing slope because the average rate of change means slope. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The second y value is 480. The first y value is 140 over 7 minus 2. This is 340 over 5. And I get 68. You could say 68. You could say 68 over 1. Um, including units. So the Y represented distance. So I'm going to say 68 miles per hour. Nora says the graph of a circle is a function because she can trace the whole graph. Mia says that a circle is not a function because multiple values X map to the same Y. Determine if either one is correct. Um, well, if you have a circle, uh, it fails the vertical line test, which means it's not a function. So Nora is not correct. Uh, Mia says that a circle graph is not a function because multiple values of x map to the same y. Um, she's kind of correct, but you know, it's not a if it's not a function, it's because multiple y values map to the same x value. That one would be true. So determine if either one is correct. Neither. Are correct. When it says justify, you know, you, you want to give some type of explanation. Um, this diagram can certainly be a counterexample for Nora. You could say counter example for Nora. And I bet if you crossed off these like I just did right here, I bet you they would give you credit because they're starting to consider anything, any type of work on this paper that you do to be, you know, work. Um, and that's a justification. If you don't feel comfortable uh, doing what I just said for this part, then I would certainly write down into words um, what I just said about the mapping being backwards.